If you viewed the lessons in this tracking motion and stabilizing shaky footage chapter sequentially, then you've already stabilized footage using the Motion Tracker's Stabilize Motion feature. In this lesson, we're going to stabilize motion with an effect, the Warp Stabilizer VFX effect. Now there are differences between the two. The Motion Tracker Stabilize Motion feature tends to lock things down, tends to be pretty rock solid, whereas the Warp Stabilizer VFX effect tends to allow a little bit of leeway. It tends to be a smoother move rather than no movement at all. But that can be good and bad. Sometimes it's nice to have a little smooth motion instead of just a rock steady shot. On the other hand though, sometimes the Warp Stabilizer actually bends things and distorts things to make that smooth motion. So in this lesson I show you how the Warp Stabilizer VFX effect works. So to do that, let's go to Working Files, go over to After Effects Projects, and go way on down to the bottom here to Warp Stabilizer. In general, I think it's a good idea to avoid shaky camera moves inside your projects. They destroy the illusion that people are watching some scene unfold in front of them and rather remind them that they're watching a video. Now, of course, shaky camera moves are sometimes appropriate, like with point of view shots or quick cuts or action scenes, but I think in general you want to try to avoid them. So for example, this shot looks like it's a handheld shot here as I move forward through it like that. See, it's kind of moving around a little bit like that. In fact, the scene started off as being pretty steady. I just gave it the illusion of being a handheld shot by going over here and adding a couple of wiggle expressions to it and then nesting it over here just for the purposes of this lesson. The Warp Stabilizer VFX effect, which was updated for the latest version of After Effects, tends to leave a little bit of handheld motion inside the clip, which can be kind of comfortable for the viewer. But the one little possible downside is that sometimes it sort of bends some elements inside the clip. Well, this latest version of the Warp Stabilizer effect, the VFX version, helps you compensate for those kind of wavy things that can happen inside the clip. And I'll explain how that works later in this lesson. But first of all, I want to remind you how the Stabilize Motion feature inside the Tracker panel works. First of all, I need to access the Tracker panel. You go to Window, Tracker, that shows up down here. And with this clip active, you get these options here. And there's a Stabilize Motion option. You click on that, and it puts a track point on here. And you probably want to have a second track point, so you click on Rotation or Scale, and that adds a second track point. Then you need to move these guys to some place that shouldn't move at all during the shot. So I'm looking at that little light out there, for example. I'll drag this guy to that light, put it there. I take this guy and maybe drag it to that light over there. And I get two things that should end up being fairly steady throughout the shot. And then I can analyze forward and backward from this point and then get a bunch of keyframes, which I apply to the anchor point and to rotation to compensate for the motion inside this clip. And that works really well. It tends to lock things down, but as I mentioned, you do need to compensate for the fact that there will be some gaps and you need to scale it up a bit. All right, that's how that process works. Let me put the workspace back to standard here so we can start from scratch. Let's apply the Warp Stabilizer VFX effect to that. There are a couple of ways to do that. You can just track it down here in Effects and Presets, or you can go to the Tracker panel. Up here, Window, Tracker, and this little button right there accesses the Warp Stabilizer effect. But I think the best way to do this thing is just to go to the effect itself. So I'm gonna close this panel and go back over here to the effect. I'll lift this up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. We can look for Warp Stabilizer by typing in Warp Lots of warp things here, but it's inside the distort group there. Warp Stabilizer VFX, drag that down there to the clip. And it immediately starts analyzing the clip, looking for things that should be steady, and then tracking those things. It takes a little while to do that, so I'll fast forward to that when it's done. All right, it's almost done. But when it finishes, it's really not done with everything. It's just done with the analysis. Once it finishes analyzing things, it stabilizes it. Now the analysis data is stored inside your project file. The stabilizing is done after the fact, and the stabilizing depends on the settings that you choose over here. Right now we've got smooth motion. If we choose no motion, it'll look very much like the stabilized motion feature inside the motion tracker. Smoothness refers to how much motion you allow to be in here. At 0%, it's like working with the motion tracker stabilized motion feature. At 100%, things can be kind of fluid, but that also might lead to a little bit of bending in some of the objects here. The method right now is subspace warp, which is the highest level. This is the most intense one. Again, sometimes subspace warp can cause things to bend. You might see these straight lines get a little curvy or wavy. If that happens, go to position, scale, and rotation and try that instead. That tends to lock things down a little bit better. The framing right now is stabilize, crop, and auto scale. What stabilize, synthesize edges does is, if you have to crop here, for example, it tries to create new edges, kind of looks ahead and behind the clip to fill in the gaps. But then you might get these columns like this kind of shifted over a little bit, so you get sort of a double set of columns along the edges. So again, you can try it out, but then you might go back here. And each time you do this, you don't have to reanalyze it, you just stabilize it again. So for example, if I go to Stabilize and Crop and go to Stabilize Synthesize, let's watch what happens there. It just re-stabilizes. It takes a few seconds. 
I'll play this a little while and see what happens here as we go forward. It's working pretty hard, just doing one frame at a time here while it synthesizes the edges. So far, so good. But it's quite a process here to do that. It's a really slow playback. So if you do this, do check around the edges here to see if you've got any funny little columns showing up there. I'm going to go back to the default, which is stabilizing crop and auto scale. A little bit faster to do that one. Down here to advance, there are a couple of interesting features. The ones that I'm going to talk about here are the show track points. And there are all the track points. Now later in the course, we're going to use the 3D camera tracker, which displays points like this as well. But why display them here? Well, these are showing you the things that the warp stabilizer followed. And you can see it's following things in motion, which is not really a good thing. You don't want it to follow things in motion. So if you see things getting a little bit warped or a little bit distorted, you can remove these points so the warp stabilizer has a better idea of how to fix the scene. And the way you do that is simply by clicking in here and dragging this little marquee around them like that. I don't want to have moving humans in there. So I select all those and press delete, which then allows it to restabilize without those guys being included in the stabilization, which tends to make a little bit better stabilizing if you're not tracking things that move. And it'll be cool if it did that for the entire clip, but I'm going to move forward a little ways here, and you'll see those dots beginning to reappear again. So it doesn't really track them all the way through. If you go down here, you see that it has auto-delete points across time, and that makes it sound pretty cool. Like you take all those points and delete them across time, but it doesn't really work that effectively. It doesn't take every one of these points and do it for the entire clip. It just does it for as long as it was tracking those particular points, which tends to be a couple of seconds max, maybe. I'll click again here and get rid of these guys one more time to kind of marquee select those guys, delete them, and again, it'll stabilize without those guys being included in the mix. Seems kind of nice that you can select these guys and then delete them across time, but in fact, it's kind of tedious to do it this way. Now, I've experimented a little bit with this by taking a clip like this and putting a mask on it, so like a mask the area that I want to include, but the warp stabilizer ignores the mask. So you have to put that mask on the clip and then drop that clip into another comp, just as we did here with the wiggle expression. So you can try that, but I found that when I do that, things kind of get really distorted around the outside there. But again, I think it's worth experimenting with that just to see how that works. But that's the general approach here. Let's just play this back and see how it looks now that we've got this all done. I'll turn the points off. I'll ram preview this and show you the finished work when I'm done. All right, let's just take a look at that now. You can see it looks pretty steady. You see a little bit of motion around the edges. That's the smoothness that goes on with the warp stabilizer. It allows for a little bit of camera movement just to give it a sense of reality without making it sort of locked down. If you look really closely here along the edges where you have straight lines, you see a little bit of distortion, a little bit of warping going on. Now, if it's obvious to you, you may want to use the stabilize motion feature in the motion tracker instead. But if it's not too obvious, then you can let this thing go. All right, that's the first thing we're going to do here. Next thing we're going to do is work with some go-kart racing here. I've got this footage here from the go-kart race. I want to show you the original footage. So I'll go back to the project panel, double-click on the kart race, and put that inside the footage view here. I'll RAM preview this and then show it to you. All right, let's take a look at this. Got a nice pass on the back straightaway there. You see how bouncy it is. What we have here is a GoPro camera sitting on the radiator behind this driver's uh, left arm. And so there are a couple of approaches we can do to try to stabilize this a little bit. We can use the motion tracker stabilize motion feature and just focus on something on the cart here that should be steady. And so that's what I did here in this comp. I used the motion tracker here already and used that point right there as the target. So I'm going to ram preview this now, and then we'll play it. You'll see that that point will be rock steady, but things will still move around because the ground moves relative to that point. Let me ram preview this now. All right, I'm going to play this now. I'm going to keep my cursor right there so you can see that that does not move relative to the scene. But it'll still look a little bouncy, though, but that axle will be rock steady. Here we go. So that's one way to stabilize it using the tracker stabilize motion feature. But we're going to try to use the warp stabilizer VFX effect in here and see how that one works. So I go to this one over here. I've got it loaded up. We want to apply the effect. So I'll just take the warp stabilizer and drag it over to there. And it'll start analyzing right away. So I'll just pause the video here and then fast forward so you can see the end result. All right. The analysis is almost done here. And just for your information, that was about a three-minute process for a 12-second clip. When I used the stabilize motion feature in the tracker, it was much, much faster. So that is a downside to using the warp stabilizer. But now that I've done this, let's just take a look at something here. I'll open up the advanced tier and go on down to the show track points. Now you can see that it tracks a lot of stuff. A lot of this stuff moves. Obviously the carts are moving here, the walls going by are moving. The only really steady things are right about here. 
and all kinds of things here are moving which may cause this analysis to not go that smoothly. So you could use that feature where you auto delete points across time and delete these things and just focus on this area down here or again you can try that mask method I explained to you earlier. But we're going to take the default here and just see what happens. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and RAM preview this here. All right, I turned off the show track points option now and I want to play this for you. And as it goes by, look at the railing as it goes by. It tends to be a little bit twisted and bent as it goes by. Here we go. The thing is, will anybody notice that or will they be watching something else in the scene? So it's kind of up to you as to whether you think the warp stabilizer works better than the stabilized motion feature inside the tracker. But in any event, I think you can see how to use both of them, and I think you know now that there are advantages and disadvantages to each one of them.